What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Nord Trades and today I bring you another Sunday stock watch list. So before we get into the video, I need everybody to go ahead and like that button, comment down below what other videos you guys would like to see, and obviously any more information about me you can check out the description. I know there's a lot of fake profiles contacting other people. I will never contact you first. So if you see, you know, YouTube comment like WhatsApp, me, this, this, and that, uh, that's just, you know, some scam going on across all of YouTube, not just my account that I've noticed. So uh, just be aware of that so that you guys, you know, don't give someone your money and, you know, they run away with it. So first things first, tomorrow, Monday, uh, Martin Luther King Day, uh, the market will be closed. As you can see right here, I have the schedule for you guys. I always do this every Sunday. So what you need to do is... Just screenshot what you have here so that you guys have the schedule for this week uh, and all that good stuff so you know what's going on. Jobless claims on Thursday uh, and all that good stuff. So this is the schedule for this week. Hopefully you guys screenshot. Now let's get into the video. Uh, we have earnings for this week. It's a little blurry. Uh, it's very clear when it's smaller, but I've extended it. So it's a little blurry here. So uh, Friday we had some banks uh, report earnings last week. We talked about earnings. Uh, that was coming up. Netflix comes up on Tuesday. We also have Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, uh, Charles Schwab uh, on Tuesday. Uh, so we have a few big uh, players here, especially the banks. I, I consider them big players. And then you have uh, the first big tech stock reporting, which is Netflix. So it's always great to see what Netflix is doing. Uh, they've been all over the place with earnings. So we'll really see what goes in, goes on. Wednesday, you have P&G, you have United Airlines. Uh, you know, you have Discover, uh, you have Morgan Stanley, which is very important. Uh, then we go here on Thursday, we go to Intel, we have IBM. Uh, let's see, what other big ones do I care about on that day? Nothing really. And then Friday, uh, you have a few more, uh, extra earnings here that I don't even, you know, pay attention to those stocks, but Bank of America, all these bank stocks are very important. They give, you know, guidance on, you know, the remainder of the year. They always let us know what the economy is up to and, you know, how, you know, we're, you know, how we're doing as far as, you know, the pandemic and what's going on with, you know, the housing market and all that good stuff. So other than that, technology stocks, you have Intel. Intel just fired, well, not fired, CEO resigned, but it was obviously meant for him to go. Uh, Intel ended up jumping like 10% that day. So it was definitely something that, you know, people from Intel, investors from Intel have been waiting for because as soon as he he, he announced his, uh, his uh, announced that he was resigning, uh, the stock jumped up like 10% that morning. It was a pretty big day for whoever swung Intel. I think someone that I know actually had calls on Intel and he obviously didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, and their contracts were up like a thousand percent. So it was a pretty big day for Intel. It was crazy. Then you have IBM uh, and United Airlines, which we'll we'll see how the volume is as far as how are people still traveling and all that good stuff. So this is earnings. Screenshot this if if you want or if you care about earnings. I do. I like to play. You know, pre-earning run-ups and obviously after earnings. Let's see. I like to see what the stock's doing. It all always offers a great opportunity. I don't like playing earnings, like literally playing earnings day. I feel like that's just a gamble. Uh, it is a gamble, uh, but a lot of people do. So screenshot this, this is important to you. So let's get back into the video. First things first, last week, January 10th, that was the last Sunday stock watch list. We talked about, the first thing we talked about was Tesla. Uh, if you can see this, It's actually going on one hour for you guys. Like I said, I don't trade on the MacBook Pro. I like recording here for our videos. I also do not, uh, these resistance support lines are from the pre-split and they won't let me take it off on the Mac. Uh, but Tesla, we talked about momentum to the upside and we have the gap to the downside. Uh, as far as this consolidation is going, I'm looking, uh, I'm looking to see if we can hold this consolidation. We're just consolidating. They did catch an upgrade to like 915. But they never pushed. So we got a little push in Tesla. But usually when you see Tesla get an upgrade or any positive momentum, uh, positive news going on, uh, momentum is usually great. And we're not seeing that, which could be, uh, you know, 
could be a bad sign here. So that's that's uh, something that I'm looking at. Tesla, Nvidia. We talked at the talked about the one year uh, consolidation. Let's go on the one year real quick. We broke midday, but we ended up closing in the consolidation. As you guys can see, we talked about this last week. I said the Neo thing was going to help it push. Uh, but it all depends on where it closes. So it ended up pushing obviously to 558, which I ended up playing uh, and I made some money on the day trade, but that ended up swinging and I lost money on the swing. So uh, the next, uh, that same day did not close above 550 just due to the overall general market. If you go to that date, January 11th, uh, you can see the market pulled back heavy, ended up pulling Nvidia at the end of the day back below 550. Um, and now we're back in consolidation. Now I'm looking to the downside, which is under 500. So if we get under there, market looks a little weak right now, and we ended up end up falling and closing under 500. That'll be something uh, I'm looking at for Nvidia. But let's just talk about last week. Roku, as you can see, I was talking about the momentum. If you go on the five day, you can see that the stock opened up Monday from 390, hit a high on Friday of 425. Roku's just been absolutely hot. Uh, and Amazon, we talked about that wedge. It's still, you know, on the one year, it's still right there. It's looking to drop. Uh, like I said, it's all about the overall general market, even with a bearish chart right here. All right, that's last week. Let's talk about this week. What am I looking at? Look at all these charts. It's so annoying, guys. But like I said, I can't take it off. It's not letting me. All right, let me zoom in. Tesla, like I said, the positive news isn't affecting it in a positive way right now, which is in the short term a negative thing, uh, but we'll really see what goes on. But to the downside, I'm looking at the stock below 800. It hasn't been below 800 uh, since, what is this, January 7th, which is the first week. So we'll see if it can hold above 800. Below 800, it'll be a near term, a near -term pullback. I would see this falling down to at least 780 if we get below uh, 800 so that's something that I'm focused on to the downside. Uh, I'll talk about a play that I caught on Friday with my chat uh, If you go on my Instagram, you can see that I made twenty two thousand uh, dollars on this trade So uh, as you can see this 832 level on Tesla You can see it bounced right here on Friday We ended up bouncing right off of it creating a little double bottom on the three or five day chart uh, I didn't play the bounce, but I made sure I played the break of 832 uh, Some people are saying you know in the comments you know, double bottoms are bullish, this, this, and that. Yeah, double bottoms create a base for a stock. Yes, it's going to bounce temporarily, which is always great. Yeah, but I wouldn't call, I, I wouldn't, that doesn't mean I have to play the bounce off of the double bottom, right? It actually makes it easier to play the, the downside of a, uh, of the double bottom because they created a base, which you can see there's create, uh, clearly demand zone right here, which you can see it wicked right here. And as you break, uh, you know a double bottom uh, Whatever you want to call it. people are saying, you know call it a support a support line instead of a double bottom I rather call it that I like when it creates a double bottom Which is a base and it ends up breaking it because it makes the break a lot more quicker and a lot more smoother uh, to the downside so uh, as you can see I played the break from 832 and it fell all the way down to 819 I announced that on Twitter before this even happened and I said I was looking to the break of the downside uh, and if you actually go to my Twitter, I'm always posting plays live of what I'm looking at. So if you ever want to catch that, go to my Twitter, turn on uh, post notifications on, and you'll always get that. So that was the play I, I caught on Tesla. Same day contracts, they paid magnificent. I ended up clearing 22000 just on Tesla. I ended up making like 4500 on Roku. Uh, but that's the Tesla play from Friday. The next thing is Amazon. If you go on the one year, we just talked about this from last week. Uh, you can see we're we we're out of the wedge now. I'm looking at uh, near-term support zone So 30 set 3070 is the next support for Amazon uh, If we break 3070, I'm looking at 3050 and then after 3050. I'm looking at 3000 It depends like I said if the market is strong It's gonna be very hard for Amazon to come down Obviously, it'll grind lower, but it won't be as smooth as I wanted to and when I'm playing Amazon I like my plays to be very smooth as you guys can see from my Instagram if you follow me there. Uh, so that's the Amazon. I have Facebook last on this list, but since we're on Amazon, I'll talk about Facebook. Facebook had the same exact chart. Uh, the hell? Oh, there we go. So Facebook had the same exact chart. We had a little uh, wedge, symmetrical wedge going on here. 
We ended up breaking, market was too strong, so it pushed this up a little bit, but ended up grinding lower, even when the market had its up days. As you can see, it grinded from 274 all the way down to 245. So since we're on Facebook, this is my Facebook play that I'm looking at. As you can see, if we go all the way to the left, you'll see we have a gap from 244 all the way down to like 235. So this is something that I'm looking at for Facebook. I know a lot of you guys love gap, gap plays. This is a gap on the one year from 245 down to 244, excuse me, uh, and change all the way down to around 235. So that's my Facebook play that I'm looking at for this week. Uh, if the market's weak, this is something that I'm definitely looking to play. Uh, so that's Facebook. The next thing that I'm looking at, you guys don't usually see me play this at all, uh, is BYND. So BYND caught some, caught some momentum, especially with the Taco Bell, uh, the Taco Bell, Taco Bell uh, announcement that Taco Bell will be using or trying out Beyond Meat uh, in their menu. As you can see, we have a little double bottom going on. Like I said, double bottom is bullish. Obviously, you're getting the bounce, uh, but can this come right back down and test that double bottom and just break right through? 100%. So don't take, oh, a double bottom, this means it's going to bounce and just keep going up. No, it doesn't mean anything like that. It does not mean that this stock is going to, you know, push to all-time highs or anything like that. Yes, you get a temporary bounce, which technically this is a temporary bounce, uh, until we continue to move higher. You don't know what's going to go on. Nobody knows what's going to go on. I'm looking at the 145 break. As you can see, we consolidated in this area before. We never closed above 145 on the one-year chart. We've obviously wicked above like the NVIDIA thing. Uh, but I'm looking for the break of 145 and then a close above 145 and then we can start moving higher and you know start testing different areas like 168. So that's my Beyond Meat uh, play that I'm looking at for this week. That's why I'm looking at Beyond Meat. They also have some positive catalyst behind it which is the taco thing, uh, Taco Bell thing. So we'll see how that carries on this week. So that's Beyond Meat. Zoom has been catching some heat. Zoom's actually been killing it. Uh, I talked about it. I don't know if I talked about it on the watch list. I don't think so. I talked about it in the chat. Uh, but 400, this needs to close above 400. Once we get a close above 400 uh, and we actually push above 400, this will end up uh, catching some heat or a rally up to 420. If we can close above 420, then we're aiming for that 440 level. And then we have a gap from 434 all the way up to 457. So we have a gap on the one year. So for all my gap players and all my gap traders, we have a gap here from 434 and change all the way up to 458. So that's my ZM that I'm looking at. I'm looking for the close above 400 and then the continuation as we close over certain key levels. So that's ZM. Uh, we talked, oh, we didn't talk about Roku. We talked about it from last week. So Roku, what am, I, what am I looking at for Roku? So if you look at Roku on the four hour chart, you can see we have a clear uptrend. There's no way around it. But you guys are used to seeing uptrends from the bottom side where it you know, continues to bounce off of a certain level uh, from, the, from the bottom side and continues to go higher. You can have that. You can also have uptrends from the top side. So this is a clear uptrend from the top side. It keeps bouncing from that, you know, the top of this uptrend down, up, and then it continues to push higher. It tests that uptrend, retest, retest. As you can see, we hit a high of 426. Roku's on a clear uptrend, right? What happens when we push above this? We'll squeeze, right? So we've been in these plays with Roku. Roku loves these uptrends from the top side. What you need to be careful for the people that always play new highs, you need to be careful when you play new highs, you're looking for a continuation. But when you have an uptrend from the top side, it always rejects from that line 98% uh, of the time. So what does that do? Uh, it makes playing new highs very, very hard because it's very tricky. So let's just say this hit a high of 351. It was the top of the trend. You try to play the new high of 351. You think it's going to keep going and keep going, and then it rejects off the line. So you need to keep that uptrend line in the back of your mind when you're playing new highs on Roku because you need to understand where that uptrend ends because if you think it's just going to continue to go higher, it's just going to keep rejecting, right? It's a healthy, it's healthy. It's hitting the top of the trend, coming back, hitting the top of the trend, coming back. And the top of the trend could be like a dollar from the last time it hit the high. So, for example, right here, it hit the, uh, December 11th, 2020. You can see the date up here. December 11th, 2020. The next day, that was the high of 330. The next day, it pushes to 334. And you're like, yo, why didn't it push any higher? I thought I was going to ride this higher to maybe 340. Well, you got to pay attention to the uptrend, the top of the uptrend, and it keeps bouncing off of it. So that's Roku. 
we also talked about NVIDIA very quickly last week, but it's the same concept that I'm looking at for this week. A consolidation, I'll be looking if we close below 500 or above 500, and I'll be playing it that way. So these are the plays that I'm looking at for this week. I know I talk fast, uh, but that's just how I operate. It's very quick for me. If you have any questions, comment down in the comment section. I'll get to it uh, if I can. Uh, and these are the plays, the schedule, and the earnings for this week. If you guys enjoyed that video, like I said, hit that like button, subscribe. Make sure you turn on post notifications. And any more uh, information about me, check the description down below. I'll see you guys. Peace.